Mike MDs, thanks for joining me today. This is a 2001 BMW 5 Series. Uh, pretty much anything with 3 Series, 5 Series with this engine, the M54 engine here, the inline 6. Uh, we, this customer is complaining of a check engine light and it's running rough. And it has fault codes for engine misfires and also lean air mixture, which means the engine is sucking in too much air from somewhere. So we use a smoke machine here. I have it hooked up already. We found the leak, it has two leaks, uh, one from the induction boot going to the throttle body and the other one coming from the crankcase ventilation valve. Very common on this engine and a lot of other engines as well. So I'm gonna show you how to replace this valve. Uh, it kind of comes as a kit with multiple little fittings. Here's one hose here. Uh, most of it is underneath the intake manifold and let's get to it. All right, these are the pieces we're replacing today. This is a crankcase ventilation kit you can order the kit online uh any bmw website that sells parts will have this kit here just get a, get the a reputable one no chinese stuff um, this here is a cold weather package a lot of times the cold weather package uh, kits are cheaper i don't know why uh, we're in california here in the southern it's hot so i'm not going to keep this on here i'm going to take these off And these pipes here, we're gonna take them off because you'll need the space. So if you can't find the kit online, um, just type in crankcase ventilation pipes or tubes, uh, also called a PCV valve kit, PCV valve pipes. Um, also it's called a cyclone separator. That's what BMW likes to call this, is a cyclone separator kit with pipes. Uh, we're replacing the throttle body boot today because it's all jacked up. So here's all the parts. All right, as you can see, we're getting started. I already took out the air box here. Normally, I would take off the air boot right here. There's a hose clamp and take the whole thing out only because this air box is attached. I just left it like that so I could smoke test this thing um, and drive it in and out of the shop uh, as we're working on other cars. So I'm gonna start taking off the air boot here, taking off this uh, up here, 10 millimeter socket. Six millimeter socket for the hose clamp. All right, now we're gonna take the DISA valve off here. There's two T40 bolts that hold that on using a T40 bit. If this is broken, then you're gonna wanna replace this. These break a lot. Two more hose clamps, one right here, going to the idle valve and one at the main throttle body. And they're both facing a pretty awkward direction. All right, here it is, it's off. It sits like this, so you can see the hose clamp is at the bottom here. Same with this one, it's facing down. It's a little difficult to get to. Um, I just use a short, the short version here to get in here. Now there's a 13 millimeter bolt holding this dipstick tube. I'm gonna remove that so I can kind of fasten this out of the way, give me some more room. All right, next I'm gonna to try to work and get some of this wiring harness connection uh, end out of the way here. There's a 10 millimeter bolt here. There's a 10 millimeter bolt behind the throttle body connector. We're gonna take the connector off and get to that as well. And I think that's it. Disconnect the idle air valve connection going to it and then try to pull this out of the way, give us some more room. All right, at this time we're gonna take the bolts off for the throttle body, pull the throttle body out. And again, they're just 10 millimeter bolts. All right, and this gasket still looks good to reuse. Now's a good time to wipe down the throttle body if you want. It's actually pretty clean considering the age of this thing. Next thing we're gonna do is remove the idle air valve and we're gonna clean it as well. Back to the Torx Spit T40. And if you can see inside of there, there's a little beak that opens and closes like this. And basically, and all you need to do is spray some brake clean in there, wiggle it a few times, 
blow it out with some air and that's good enough all right now i know it seems like there's a lot going on in here but once you just take your time slow down and start looking and familiarize uh, with everything and you'll get a better grasp of it this is the valve we're replacing here there's two of these torx bit i think they're 25s or 30s holding this valve on but it has a drain valve right here where it separates the oil and air and then the oil goes back down to a pipe which is broken you can see that pipe is broken right there that's usually what goes first on these also the diaphragm inside of here that goes down to the dipstick tube see that thing's broken there look at it but what we're going to do first is take apart the other pieces that attach to that valve this being one of them and you'll have to reach down in there. You can see way in there, if I can zoom in. See that there? That's it, it has a clip on it. Uh, it's difficult to, to grab with your hands. I usually just break it off with like a pick or screwdriver and yank that thing out. And as well as this up here, there's a connection here. Uh, just be careful right here, this is the intake manifold. Just, um, you know, you don't wanna ruin the intake manifold. But this piece is gonna come off here and also this piece we're going to replace same thing connections uh, go all the way back here so we're going to remove this pipe and this pipe here going down to it because we're replacing these items and then we will fish this pigtail out this is like a corkscrew we'll fish that out here and then we'll remove those bolts or screws that hold this valve off that valve will be able to be pulled out and uh, we'll, we'll go that route. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is remove this one here. I usually use a long screwdriver and kind of manipulate that little clip we talked about earlier and break those off so I can pull this out here. This one right here, I can usually just pinch, get that off just like that. You know, this stuff is brittle. All right, see there's that there. All right, in this top section here, I see I pulled this part off of the manifold. It still has this pipe. This one's really hard to get off because you have to pinch both sides. I usually just cut it. Just like that. All right, there's that one out. See that has a fitting. You just break it with a pick or something and yank it out. All right, the one that's left over that has like a corkscrew and it goes down to the side of this valve is the tricky one here. All right, I got it. See, it kind of corkscrews in like this. Just like that. Zooming in now, I'm gonna work on those two screws we talked about earlier on that valve and that whole thing will pull out here. All right, this thing is broken because I was yanking on it. But it's out now all right going back together i like to put the corkscrew one in first to guide it in there and then i meet it with the valve on the other side and clip them together this is upside down uh, clip them together and then bolt this thing the rest of the way in okay now let's meet goes in like this now let's meet the valve with that with that pipe there all right i'm going to tighten down these screws for the cyclone separator now we're going to click the dip to stick tube in the very bottom of the valve all right see it right here it's a very tight area for the camera click it right under and it goes underneath this pipe right here you want to go underneath mind the routing there it is now for this top tube. All right, that's in. And the last one here, I suggest getting the bottom on first and then working the top. All right, now this is the bottom part. You can see it's very hard to see. There's lots of stuff in the way. There it is, it's not in yet. There. So what I do is I push with one hand over here and I get a, a screwdriver and push the other end so they both click in nicely. There's one click, there's two clicks. That's in, it's not coming out. Now for the top. 
All right, if you want, you can put some lube on these things. You can spray some silicone spray. That's actually the best. Um, you can use Vaseline, of course. All right, so everything on the valve is all back together, all the pipes. So now we just put everything back together. We start with the throttle body and the idle air valve. All right, now we're gonna do this connection unit. At the bottom here is a little tricky. There's a there's a stud coming out of the throttle body. Don't forget to put the nut on that. I'm gonna put this through just like that, but it's down there. The 13 millimeter nut for the dipstick tube. All right, now the DISA valve. Thank you for watching i hope this has helped you out it's quite it's quite a little project but i, I believe you can do it uh, just scroll back through this video and double check some things make sure everything's tight uh, it's a good idea to clear the fault codes after and if you can if you're if you have a scanner that does it to clear adaptations that totally resets all the learning uh, for the mapping uh, for the fuel air mixture uh, clearing faults will probably be enough if that's all you have not a problem I'll see you on the next one. Happy motoring to you.